Hi everyone, welcome to Strip Club. Hi. Thanks very much. So today we're bringing you another pattern that uses two and a half inch strips. This one is called Top Down. Do you like it? Yes. Thank you. Um, if you'll notice, well, if you know us, you probably know that we like to add background, accent fabric, maybe a couple of backgrounds, maybe a couple of accents. In this one, it's nothing but strips and borders. That means if you have a bundle of two and a half inch strips, this is what you can make, just add some borders. And truth be told, you don't have to add borders. <gasps> I know. <laughs> Mind blowing. But in this, uh, this particular quilt, we did. So first, you're going to start with your two and a half inch strips. Our collection here today is fabrics that we've compiled from um, bolts off of the floor. These are all batik fabrics. Aren't they pretty? Yeah. Have you seen this color combination before? Oh, I haven't. Except like, you know, right in my shirt, but that's about it. But I just love the mix of the corals and a bit of yellow and the greens and the browns. So first you start with two and a half inch strips. Then you're going to sew four two and a half inch strips together. Press in one direction. You got that? Four two and a half inch strips. Then you kind of cut it into a square. Square looks a little bit like this. You want to keep two squares of exactly the same fabric combination together. You take those two squares and you will put them right sides together so that the same fabrics are at the same points. So if you have a green up top, you have a green on both sides. So you have two squares right sides together, green stripes, green strips touching each other, cream strips touching each other, brown strips with an argyle print touching each other. And then, um, what would you call color? What is this? Peach, and then peach. So you put those two right sides together. On the back of one, you draw a diagonal line. Now, if you don't want to draw a diagonal line, come see me afterwards. I have the system for you. Draw a diagonal line on the back of your fabric like this. And then, can you see this line? And then you will stitch a quarter inch seam on each side of the diagonal line. Are you with me? You're going to cut on that drawn line. And then you're going to open up. There's your block. Thanks for coming. <laughs> See your block? We have it on point in the quilt. So ignore the block that sits behind it. So you see how it's very important to make sure those uh, strips, the colors on each side match up. Because if they don't, um, you have a different quilt. Have a different quilt. <laughs> it won't be wrong. It'll just be different. It just won't be this quilt. So from each of the two squares, you will get two blocks, one from one side and one from the other side. Right? Two blocks. Two squares, two blocks. So this quilt is set on point, which means that okay, everybody has to tilt their head like this. So it means that here's your block. And here are your blocks, and they're, they're twisted so that they become diamonds instead of squares. Technically, they're not diamonds, but you know, just stick with me. So here's one block. Here are three blocks. Here's five blocks. Do you see the blocks? OK. But if we just had those blocks, it wouldn't be a square quilt. So we need to fill in the end pieces with setting triangles. Here's a setting triangle. Here's a setting triangle. Here's a setting triangle. Here's a setting triangle. So now if you look up this row, it goes the setting triangle, which is from the left-hand side. We have a block, a block, a block, and another setting triangle. Yeah? So we're going to have to make setting triangles. Now let's go back to that same row. Here's a setting triangle, and here's a setting triangle. Are they the same setting triangle? No. no. In fact, Let's go all the way to the other side. Here's a setting triangle. OK, bad example. Here's a setting triangle. Here's a setting triangle. Are they the same triangle? I'm going to take it one step further. Here's a setting triangle. And here's a setting triangle. Are they the same? They are not the same. That is correct. Good class. They look the same, but they're not. They are reversed, and so they have to be cut differently. 
Now, on top of all that, we have the corner setting triangles. Here's a corner setting triangle. Here's a corner setting triangle. Are they the same? Actually, they are. It's a trick question. I love knowing the answers to the questions I ask. All right, but work with me. Coming down here, here's a setting triangle. Is it the same as this setting triangle? And here's a setting triangle. Is this the same as this? Yes. Good, you're catching on. OK, so in summary, we have four different setting triangles and two different corner setting triangles. It all sounds complicated. The pattern looks thick. There's lots of cutting instructions. It's really easy. It's just that we put pictures in there. Do you want to see how it comes together? OK, so first thing, let's do top and bottom. Here is the top setting triangle, and here is the bottom setting triangle. Now, the reason they are pieced the way they are pieced is because the bottom setting triangle is really the top half of the block, right? Because we want to duplicate this pattern from here up. We want that duplicated in the bottom setting triangle to make the um, pattern fluid, make it complete. Now, if you ask me at some point, Daniela, did you think about just using plain fabric for the setting triangles and eliminate all of this? Yes, I did. You can. It doesn't look as good. The magic of this pattern is that it just continues on to the borders and is complete. Otherwise, it starts to look like squares. This is fluid. It's one overall pattern. OK, so back to the setting triangles. Top and bottom. Now, you might think to yourself, just take a block and cut it in half, right? Wrong. Why wrong? It's not big enough. A setting triangle needs to be bigger than your block size. So we're going to do exactly the same thing as we did with um, our block, but instead of four strips, we're going to do out of five. Okay? So now we have five, five strips that will sew together. Okay? So imagine the five strips, cut it into a square, put two like squares together, diagonal line, open it up. OK, so here is the block that will become your setting triangles. Same as the original block, only one strip bigger, right? So now we're going to cut diagonally this way. I heard the aha. So from here, you get Mm. OK, so this comes from the same square. Yes? Hold on. Let me move it. Don't get ahead of me. Don't think. Don't think. OK, so that's a square. Cut diagonally, right? This that you cut from the bottom becomes your top setting triangle. And the one that you cut from the top becomes your bottom setting triangle. Does that make sense? It seems when I wrote it, I had to think about it. Is that, is that right? Yeah, but that's right because you want this pattern to duplicate in the quilt. You always want this little square to be on top, unless you do your quilt differently, which you're welcome to do. By all means, send me a picture. Daniela at CozyQuilt.com. Send me a picture. OK, and then the other one. <laughs> so you have to imagine. That's what it looks like up on top. All right? OK, so now, are you with me? Any questions? OK. OK, so that's the top and that's the bottom. Easy, right? OK, that took up a page of your instructions to explain how to do that. Now we're going to make the side setting triangles. Refer to your directions. Remember, this is the pattern top down. You can buy it at your local quilt shop. And since we are your local quilt shop, you got it from us. So from the same set of five, one, two, three, four, five, you will cut a triangle. One, two, three, four, five. The easiest way to do that, and it has to be this orientation. The easiest way to do that is cut a square and then cut diagonally. So here is your right side setting triangle. Same concept, however, you do have to cut a new square, and you will get your left. Uh, 
Oh, you want the right on the right? Oh my gosh. Okay. So, okay, okay, let's do this. Well, now let's start like this. There's your left. Okay? And here's your right. Okay? Now you cannot get these two out of the same square. If you do, send me an email, send me a picture, because I will be mesmerized. I tried. I tried every possible way. Flipping, turning, everything. So you will um, cut them just like this. So the diagonal line goes like that, and the stripes go in that direction. And then they become your setting triangles. Left on the left side, right on the right side. Did we do that correctly? OK. So those will finish off the sides. Now for the last piece, the top and the bottom setting triangles. Now, wait, I'm thinking. Corners, Corners that's, that's what I said. I said the, <laughs> I, was, I was so close, oh, thanks. All right, sides, uh, the corner setting triangles. You have some leftover fabric from that. You will um, sew three strips together. And then we will actually go to our strip tube ruler. Yay! So imagine three strips sewn together like this, right? The magic number is in your pattern. You place that measurement on your bottom stitching line like this, up and down, and then flip it over, up and down. And what did you just get? You got two, the top triangles. This is side. Oh, by the way, I label these as you go. <laughs> you laugh knowingly. Mm -hmm. Oh, look, I had a. That's what we cut them from. All right. So from here, you cut out two triangles that became the top. You see them in the quilt? Okay. Now we have to do the bottom corners. You see how all of this, none of this is hard? All of this, none of this is hard. Now we're going to do this one. So we're going to sew, cut segments from the leftover pieces of this, sew them together. So now that I have um, vertical. Wait, no, these are horizontal. Now I have vertical. And from there, I'm going to cut out same size with the strip tube ruler like this. Um, you may want to put the diagonal line on a seam line just so it looks nice. And then from there, we'll cut out two triangles with the strips going the opposite direction. You follow? Yep. So that becomes your two bottom corner setting triangles. Not hard, right? None of it's hard. Yeah, Whew, thanks. Just label, especially, the, especially your setting triangles. Um, when you have it assembled, you will sew it together by diagonal rows, just as we pointed out before. You'll start with a main row. This is not a row. Your corners are not rows. Those go on very last. Setting, block, setting, row. Press in one direction. Setting, block, 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 setting, another row. So when you have those rows pieced together, then you can sew the rows to each other to make your quilt. And then very end, you add the corners. Those are last. And then you'll want to square up. So you just want to trim the edges of the quilt. This quilt goes together so nicely, there may not be a lot to trim off. I don't know if you can see, but the block ends here, right where the star is. The block point ends there, and from here to the border is all your setting triangle. So it's got a little float in there, which is nice. Float's always nice. 
add, if you like, border one, and then add border two. And then we went, we picked a, the fantastic um, orange print for the binding to make it all come together. Is it nice? Yeah. Do you like it? Yeah. Um, it's pretty fast. As you can see, there's a lot of pages, there's a lot of steps, and we lay out each of the different sizes because there's how many sizes in this class? Five, five different sizes in the pattern. We have the baby, throw, twin, queen, and king. So we have each of the sizes of the layouts for you because on point, we know it's, it's great to see it for your individual quilt. So this 18-page pattern, this is the, um, this one here is the throw. So this used 36 strips. So this 29-page pattern is really not that hard. So when you take home this 32-page pattern, <laughs> don't be daunted by the size. It's really very easy. Um, I'm guessing, yes, oh, we have a question. You want to see what's on the back? That's a crazy print. What is that, cheetah, giraffe? Antelope? Turtle? <laughs> Turtle. Ooh. Boy, that camouflaged so well, I forgot it was there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm truly excited because I get to show you another sample. It is a different colorway. Color yes. I'm excited because it's a sneak peek of my new fabric coming up. Do you want to see it? Yes. Do I have tall people to help me with? Kristen, Kathy? Kristen? Oh, you guys dress to match. You're like the, the backup singers. Do wop. Do wop. Wait, wait, is this the right one? Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? I think it's the right one. This fabric is called Tonga Sophisticate. Um, I'm fortunate enough to be a designer for Timeless Treasures, and this is the latest fabric that should be out in the next month or so. Do you like it? Thank you. This is the twin size. So here we have, um, I think, 93 strips. 95 strips, 105 strips, 93 strips in this 52-page pattern. <laughs> These are um, all the fabrics that are in the collection, and then we picked two uh, fabrics for the border. This, oh, they're both in the collection. Isn't this border great? So this is Tonga Sophisticate. will be out soon. 96 strips. Sophisticate. We're, we started to call it Sophie for short. Do you have all those Sophie quilts? Mm-hmm. Lovely? Oh, wait. They're not. Paparazzi still out. Stand by. Your arm's getting tired? Yeah. Yeah. It, does, it reads patriotic. Yeah, you're not the first person to say that. It's got those blues and the reds. How about that? It's coming out just in time. And then check out this. Yeah, this stripe right here. It does look flaggish with the border print. Hey, didn't know. All right. Why don't you show them the quilting on the back? This is a Georgette digitized design for um, digitized quilting systems. Liz did it on our Pro Stitcher. Um, Georgette is a quilter's niche, so you can buy this digitized design if you have a uh, computerized quilting system. You don't have to do the quilting. Computer can do it for you. Nice. Look, Ma, no hands. Yeah. <laughs> Any questions on top down? No. Um, would you like to see some other quilts in this from this fabric? Yeah. Yeah. yeah? yeah. Get yep. Okay, so this one is actually a free pattern that comes with the pre-cut strip bundle. you get a better look at some of the fabrics and how they play. 
Check out this border print. So we got a little southwestern feel going in here. So if you know and love us, you'll know the strip tube ruler. So this is a basic block that uses the strip tube technique. And the pattern is free with the, with the um, strip bundle. Wait, they're not ready yet. Hold on, hold on. Cameras are still out. I see the little Apple logo. We're not ready yet. OK. And there's the back. Isn't that pretty? Also quilter's niche. Also my mom's design. Really love this. Love the way that one plays together. OK, so we didn't get all the binding done yet, OK? God. <laughs> what is this? Pray tell, hark. See if I can name it. Oh, see if you can name it. That's that's right. Uh huh. This is flower fields. Very close. This is flower fields, and this uses um, gosh half yard cuts. Am I right? Am I right? Am I right? Yes, half yard cuts. And I do believe this is the throw. Use 14 half yard cuts. Simple uh, half square triangles. Simple strip tube ruler to create the half square triangles. A great way for the uh, for great way for uh, the fabrics to play with each other. You can really see how they play off of each other. Is it pretty? I love this pattern. I swear, this pattern we've seen in so many different color combinations. Of course, this one's my new favorite. However, ooh, another great uh, quilting design. Also Georgette's, also Quilter's Niche, which is my mom. It's weird to say Georgette when it's just mom. See if you can name this one. <coughs> Stinker. She saw the pattern. This is Western Stars. That is correct. So here's the pattern for this one, Western Stars. Now we have a lot of background play in here. And we picked two different colors for the backgrounds. One's a little lighter, one's a little medium. And if you were part of the Southern California run, this was our block for the Southern California run. So we turned it into a pattern. Pretty, huh? Now we go with, uh, again, with the Southwestern print for the um, borders. And you, here's the quilting designs again. Another one, also pretty. Check out the binding. Do you love the binding? There's that stripe we talked about before. I love the different elements in this um, fabric collection. Depending on my day, I have different prints that are different favorites. Mm. All right, we have one more to share with you. Oh man, you don't know. <sighs> and I have Three more quilts that I'm not showing you. Me, me, me. Yeah, just kidding. I'll show it to you another time. And that actually, and two more biggies to show you, but um, they're off being photographed right now, so I, I don't have them. And can you name this one? No yeah, no measure Bargello. Wendy Matson is our designer. She created this, and she actually made the sample for us. Isn't that lovely how the stripe plays? So this is, um, in order to make this pattern, which, well, hold on, let me get it for you so you can see what it looks like. This was our original sample. And you'll see it hanging up um, in our rafters. This is No Measure Bargello. And it's really phenomenally designed, engineered, and written. You need to have two bundles of identical strips, 20 each. Timeless Treasure does that with their pre-cut strips. They'll have 20 different fabrics and then two of each. That's exactly what you need to make this project. So this is a strip set and background fabric. So what um, Wendy did is she sort of gradiated the fabrics to create this effect. There is one fabric that's an accent. Can you see the accent fabric? It appears twice in two rows. So it's this sort of smoky black, which I think is called espresso. And then um, she has a tiny little 
border in here, a flange, which is a three-dimensional inner border to have just that pop of color. And we duplicated the accent in that border just to frame it. And then we love the way that this, this blue played against this border. Now, how do you like this border fabric? That's great, isn't it? So this is No Measure Bargello. And this uses strips and background fabric. And you really is no measuring in this. It's a very cool technique. I don't think you need to show the back on this one. We can see the quilting beautifully in that. Yep. Um, all of our backing is uh, timeless is extra wide. So when we, we quilted all of these quilts, we just used, she used extra wide fabric when you're using backing. It's so nice. You don't have to piece anything. You don't have to worry about anything. And you'll notice they're all the same because we had one giant bolt and we did them all out of the same fabrics. All right, my friends. Was that fun? Yeah. Um, I do have the best job in the world. So thank you for supporting me and for cheering. Any questions? No questions? No nothing? Yes? That's great. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, she said that she likes the way that each of the, the prints, the chops, the designs on each of the fabrics is different. We try not to duplicate too much, but we hope to create something that they go well together. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It's a lot of fun. We have more to come, but that's down the road. So today, today we stick with Sophie. So no other questions? Yes. 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 We, um, we will be vending at the Beach Cities uh, Quilt Show. This happens every other year up in the Beach Cities area here in Southern California. Mission Viejo. It's the, what is it? What's the university? How do you pronounce it? Soka. Soka. Soka University. So it'll be the first weekend of June, Saturday and Sunday. Come and visit us. We'll be there. Other vendors will be there. Some beautiful quilts. Um, it's a great time. Can you think of a better thing to do than either be at a quilt shop or be at a quilt show on a Saturday or Sunday? You can go to a car show. You could be sewing, yes. Yeah, but you know you got to get out once in a while. So there's a shameless plug for Beach City's uh, Quilt Guild show. Anything more? No other questions? Okay, you guys, thank you for coming. Should we do this again next month? Yes. yes. Another pattern that uses two and a half inch strips. Thanks. Thank you.